What are they hiding from us? What are they hiding from us? I'll tell you the most amazing thing I discovered what they're hiding us from. You guys all ready? Are you ready now? Okay. We have a new king. This is the key. Hang on, hang on, hang on. You might find it shocking. But the coronavirus actually means we crown him in Latin. But the truth is there for you to make your own mind up. We have a new king! I implore you to do your own research and follow your own... White Rabbit. This whole QAnon movement, the whole revolution was started by an expression that says, follow the white rabbit. And the letter that Greg has from Queen Victoria has got the white rabbit on. It's yeah. actually here. It's actually here. It's, and it's time now. And it's time now. And here it is. <laughs> the, entire, <laughs> the entire British Empire in a cutout over here. The 28th of May, 2020, I came across a man called Greg Howard, who claimed to be the King of England. And from the gate, the crest has gone. The British royal family has been flat lie royal since 1840. Flat lie royal means illegitimate, not allowed on the throne. With this ascension to the throne and the current situation with the coronavirus, is this all tied in? The madness of all of this, you know, one of my favorite expressions was, I was telling my friend, I said, listen, I'm gonna go and interview this man in England who claims he has this right to ascend the throne. And he said, you're talking science fiction. And I, it took me a second and I said to him, I said, look at your life. You've been banged up for three months, locked down, Mm. Mm. Can't see your loved ones. Mm. You gotta wear a mask to go out. I said, what science fiction? We're living in science fiction. On the 16th of March, 2020, the UK went into a lockdown. This is because of a global event, the coronavirus pandemic. People found themselves at home and with lots of time on their hands. Something that lots of these people did was look into the conspiracy theory world. My name's M. Well, it isn't really, but the reasons I'll explain later, I've had to hide my identity. For over half my life, I've been looking into conspiracy theory. I have learned that not everything we've been taught and the narrative in the mainstream even what we were taught at school or is in the mainstream science domain is necessarily true. Some of these conspiracy theories have over time turned out to be conspiracy facts. Many of these people, for the first time during a time of confusion, fear and hope, have been looking into the conspiracy theory world and have been taken in by something that I also discovered. There was a man who was claiming to be the rightful King of England and has even been telling us that the current crop of royals are illegitimate. This is the story about how I discovered Greg Hallett. How when I went down this metaphorical rabbit hole, I researched and found out that I had a journey that I had no idea awaited me. This is the story of a guy who is allegedly king and my journey to get to the bottom of the truth. Pope's abdicated, the Queen's abdicated, and I've been named in movies. I've named myself in the documents with these titles. Joseph Gregory Hallett. I don't know if any of you have become aware of the claims of this man. He makes out that he is the rightful inheritor of the title Christ, and also the direct descendant 
of Anne Boleyn and Walter Riley, which somehow makes him the rightful king of England and the territories and countless other things. He claims the rightful ownership of basically everything, you, me, the entire world, the Catholic Church, uh, you name it. <laughs> I just wanted to give you a bit of background on my journey with this whole Greg Hallett story and how we've come to be where we are today with it. Um, so for me, I discovered Greg. Uh, I watched one of Raven Moonstone's videos and uh, in it she then tells us about we have a new king um, and she tells us about Greg and I was initially excited about the prospect you know um, I'd done investigation and heard about the current crop of royals into some shady stuff uh, child trafficking uh, you know you have the whole Prince Andrew um, sort of pedogate scenario going on <clears throat> And I thought, well, great, you know, if uh, this man is who he says he is and he's going to uh, kick the royals out of Buckingham Palace, then that can only be a good thing, right? Well, so I thought. From there, I added Greg as a friend on Facebook, uh, and I just sort of sat back, watched what was going on. Um, i done some investigation myself, and... Uh, you know, I just watched it for a while. Suddenly I saw him thanking people for giving him money. So that was a big red flag for me. But I kept watching. You know, this guy still could be genuine. He was asking for, or his group of people were asking for, 2,700 to process documentation for the courts. And then later down the line, I see that he finally collected £2,700 of people's hard-earned money and he came out <coughs> with a post on his page saying this. We bought a new server for three years. It cost exactly the same as the money raised, £2,700. So we're keeping the pay lines open, <laughs> hoping that people would still give him money. Funnily enough, the £2,700 asked for the processing of documents seems to be exactly the same as the 2,700 needed for a new server. This was my first major red flag. I looked into his website and all the documents on it that he was claiming was the hard evidence needed to assert his claim to the throne. On inspection, although initially impressive, I found them very suspect. And later on, I would investigate them more closely. And the harder I looked, the more suspect they appeared. And then I saw the videos from his family, his two sisters and his mother, telling you guys, don't give him money. He's he's done this before, you know, he's he's got mental delusions. He probably believes what he's saying. Um, you know, and I saw him then shrug off these videos, you know, um, when people were pressing him for answers on them he was just saying oh I've heard of the Cinderella story you know the the two jealous sisters and not really giving us much um, and for me him not addressing those videos properly was also a, a big telling point he uh, I saw people sticking up for him in these comments and they were saying no he's the real king you know um, these 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 women are just uh, druggies or they've been paid off to say these things um, and I saw nothing from Greg and as I was then sort of trying to contest this all that Greg was doing was thanking the people that were sticking up for him but not giving any more information and I was saying to them look he's he's backing you but he's not he's not saying anything he's just saying thanks he, well he's not backing you in fact he's just thanking you for sticking up for him and he's not giving us anything he's not addressing these videos properly so from there I'm sorry but um, it was clear to me he was lying so um, there was that and then I kept on looking and I saw some more ridiculous claims from him so 
one of the most ridiculous ones for me was during the time of uh, the coronavirus um, which we're still going through now when the NHS you know we were trying to the you know the, the, the country went into lockdown um, and all the British public would come into their doorsteps to clap for the NHS the, you know the National Health Service or so they thought so Greg claims that they are actually at their doorsteps clapping for new Hallett Sovereign right so they're all at the doorsteps clapping for him I'm sorry but bullshit so that was one of the most ridiculous ones the other one was um, Prince William made an address to the nation and apparently at one point he bows his head down to show that he's got no hair and he says no hair no air no air to the throne I mean come on that is just ridiculous as well very very weird little skit I suppose you'd say between uh, Stephen Fry and Prince William as part of the comic relief thing Oh, come on, you lot. I thought Germans were meant to be punctual. <coughs> I'm, I'm here, Melchard. Oh, Your Royal Highness. Very good to see you, sir. Oh, come on, even five-year-olds have mastered Zoom. Sorry about that. Complicated stuff, Zoom. Isn't it? How are you, Melchard? Have you been self-isolating? Yes, I'm here with my old friend Lord Blackadder. Our grandfathers fought together. Constantly, I'm told. Just the two of you? Well, no. Uh, he brought along a curious little fellow called Baldrick, who smells of turnips. So, how's the homeschooling going? <laughs> it's a bit of a nightmare, really. Well, I'd be delighted to help if I can. Um, what subjects are on the curriculum? Spelling? Well, I could probably help with that. I can do most words from cat to contrafibularities. What, what about history? I'm not too bad on kings and queens, but then I'm guessing that that may also be your strong point. <laughs> You'd think so, wouldn't you? Uh, how's your French? J'espère que j'ai une foi de familier et du classique. Uh, I literally have no idea what you're talking about. Happy to serve, sir. And uh, to return to the matter in hand, this is your 60-second warning. All right, thank you so much. I'll, um, I'll go and get the family together. Mm, excellent. By the way, have you seen anything good on TV? It's hell without EastEnders. Isn't it? Uh, they tell me Tiger King is rather good. Yes, I, uh, I tend to avoid shows about royalty. And there's now 45 seconds and counting, sir. I think our time is up. On my way, let me just see if I can find my socks. And my shoes. And my trousers. Hmm. <sighs> Excellent. Job diddly done done done. coronavirus was to name me as the king so you've got all these people standing outside their houses at 8 p.m on thursday night clapping the nhs i bet nhs stands for new hallet sovereign fascinating so they're actually standing out clapping me in and prince william advocated to me as well as all the others he um he was getting interviewed and he said I don't have any. I don't have any shoes. I don't have any socks. I don't have any trousers, and that means that he is the emperor with no clothes, right? And when he's saying that, he put his head right down like that for an extended period, and he's all bald through here. Yes. So he was saying that he is no hair. Fascinating. Yeah. And then hey, when I, you play. <laughs> when you play trousers, when you said I, I had no trousers, when you play no trousers backwards, it's Greg Hallett. And that her, expectant, her acceptance speech backwards sounds like someone's making it up. Now, you're all going to dash away and play her speech backwards, aren't you? Well, I think you'll find that Hallett is the one making up all those claims about our present queen. Completely crazy. Surprise, surprise.
but the living strength and majesty. So after that, people started getting in contact with me and I then developed um, unintentionally a little network of, of people uh, adding me and they were telling me about their experiences and um, some of them were, they'd given them money um, and then they'd realised soon afterwards that he might not be genuine and then when they start to ask questions they get removed from the groups or um, they get ostracized from the from the community you know I mean th these Greg fan pages are, are, are like a cult to be honest uh, a lady who had really looked into um, Greg you know she dug a lot into his background and his past interviews with Jim Fetzer and few others and he, she dug up lots of information and she was trying to wake people up in the Greg Fanatic groups and she like myself and a lot of other people then were met with disdain and hate and um, oh you know you're trolls um, and most of us getting kicked out of these groups just for asking questions so uh, on the 27th of June I decided with all this information you know something had to be done um, people were getting conned out of money um, it was affecting their mental health you know this woman who was trying to bring to light some of his um, deception then started to have her mental health adversely affected and she had to come off uh, Facebook for a little bit um, she just she was up to like 5 a.m. in the morning you know she was really kind of brought down by the whole thing and that no one would believe her you know so I felt it was important to try and wake people up to this deception so what I did is I obviously had this small network of people uh, I decided to start a group on the 27th of June uh, and this group is to try and share information um, without the 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 hates uh, and you know the, the comments from all of the Greg fanatics uh, amongst it you know so we could freely share this information and collate it all together so we can have a bigger picture and then we can use this bigger picture to try and wake people up in the Greg fanatic groups through meeting many of these people because of the same mission that they were on to help others by trying to wise people up to this apparent deception I managed to create a network this led me to creating a group a Facebook group a group we called allegedly king and here we are um it is now the 12th of july so uh what's that that's like 15 days there must be more than that it feels like more than that that we've been doing this group and already tons and tons of information um has come to light uh, and and this information has come from like i said ex buckingham palace insider it's come from people that know greg personally you know his family um people that uh that lived with him or were friends with him in the past uh it's come from avid researchers you know i've had this uh people interested in history or clinical uh, psychologists etc contacting me um and we're just gathering loads and loads and loads of information and the hope is that we can uh, put together something big to try and red pill these guys who are duped by this great deception uh, in this time we've seen three parts of the hidden king documentary come out uh in all three parts it's full of baseless claims um you know no proof no evidence um it's just filled with uh, his take on uh, prophecy um basically you know he even admits uh, that he read the bible and he tried to fit himself into into the prophecies into that story so that's a, just a quick update of my journey and where we are today. One of the people that I was trying to reach in the Greg Hallett fan groups gave me a hard time for trying to share the knowledge that I had collated. It turns out that after receiving such a hateful reaction from her, that she would from that scenario go into investigating herself from the evidence I'd given and that she would find out from her own investigations that this story was very suspect. I had an application for Sharon to join my group. I declined this application and explained to her that she had behaved horribly towards me when I tried to help. However, after giving me a backlash for trying to share the information, 
she had discovered herself that this story was likely fabricated in her eyes. She then apologized to me profusely. She said, I'm very, very sorry for treating you like that. However, after your interaction, I looked into it myself and discovered that you may be right, that Greg is not genuine, and I am very, very sorry, and I hope you can forgive me. Although I don't care about money, I care about the people. Now, today, me and Sharon happen to have reconciled. I have forgiven her, and now she is helping with a cause to help others rise up to this deception. This would be the first of many confirmations that I was helping people and motivations carry on with my cause and with my group, help many others. Through this network that we built, I managed to get hold of people that knew Greg, his family, his sisters in particular, and also Tom Carhill, who he lived with for four months. I started to make videos for the group. I also started talking to the sisters about potentially making some videos with them to highlight some of the information that would show the real Greg Hallett. In this time, I also decided it would be a good idea to be careful of my identity. If I was going to make these interviews, I may as well make a YouTube channel to bring this to light. It was at this time I decided to make my pseudonym, M, Seeker of Truth with and then all of a sudden they started pushing that Buckingham Palace was getting ready for Greg. I decided to do some groundwork. If I was going to prove that these claims about Buckingham Palace were absurd and also that they were untrue, I would have to travel to London and go to Buckingham Palace myself. And that is exactly what I did. We're at Buckingham Palace and it's Friday 24th of July and I'm here to show you that some of the claims that Greg makes about Buckingham Palace getting ready for him is not true. Why they've taken the chain off the unicorn and taken that off, you know? I mean, well, I can tell you why they did it. They're, they're acknowledging me. Parliament is in the, in the royal family, flat lower royal family, are acknowledging me, and that's why they've done it. It's called a stop on action. Oh, yes. Yeah, so the emblem of one of the gates had come off, had come off the gate. And this was even reported in the news at the time, uh, you know, with pictures, you know, there's plenty of articles out there. I'll drop one in the comments below. But um, one was saying that, you know, a lorry had, had backed up into the gate and had knocked off the emblem. And now it had gone for repairs. So Greg's cult of followers um, were saying, oh, no, this is rubbish. They've removed it for him. Well, I'm sorry, but if they're going to remove that for him, surely you'd think they would remove all of the emblems off all of the gates? I mean, it makes no sense. So first, as you can see behind me, there's uh, two emblems on this gate, two of the Queen's, Queen's crests on this gate, uh, and they're still in place. This is the middle gate here. As you can see, there's two more crests on the gate. Uh, so Greg supporters have been saying that the right gate has one of the missing crests because of they're getting the Buckingham Palace ready for Greg. And here on the right gate, there is still a missing crest and one other crest. So my question is, how does it make sense if they're removing crests for Greg, that there is still five crests on the gates? It makes no sense. If you're getting the palace ready for someone and you're removing a crest from the gate for that reason, then you would think that they would remove all six, right? It makes no sense to me. And then they took a picture of what they said was a Gurkha um, guarding the palace. Oh, where's the royal guard gone? Oh, they've disappeared because uh, Greg is, is moving into the palace. You know, and he's backing these claims. And then I find out that actually he, uh, these, these guards were actually RAF men and they have tra traditionally always taken turn guarding the palace. So I got this information from um, from an ex Buckingham Palace employee, but uh, actually uh, a lot of my network uh, then informed me. Oh yeah, well, I've always known this. You know, I've taken pictures. I've, I went even went there as a kid and used to see you know RAF men taking taking turn on guard and also on guard. I don't know if you can see, but uh, there is one of the royal guard. Uh, 
King's Royal Hussars and it's uh, one of their four outfits and uh, this is one of their outfits obviously I can't zoom on this video but I'll uh, take a picture so firstly you've got five out of six emblems still on the gates secondly you've got royal guards the King's Royal Hussars guarding the palace right now so the last claim about Buckingham Palace was that the windows are all boarded up. They're not boarded up. They are protected by a protective film. Now this is because McAlpine, they have been hired and it makes total sense while the uh, Queen and, and uh, Philip are in isolation at um, Windsor Castle. It makes absolute sense that they use this time to uh, do renovations. So uh, here's an article put out by the Business Times and it says that the uh, Buckingham Palace had to issue a fact check as rumours circulate over the state of the Queen, her family and the official residence. So a spokesperson from the palace denied speculations and said that the reason there is a missing crest at the palace gates was because it was being repaired and it was knocked off by a truck into October 2019. Um, the reason the windows of Buckingham Palace are covered up was because of the current renovation works which was stalled for two months due to the coronavirus and in mid-May Queen Elizabeth approved the restart of work on the palace just as the government also allowed construction work to resume after two months of lockdown. So it says the windows have been lined with a protective film in order to protect the interior fabric during the renovations thus it appeared from the outside that the palace's windows had been covered in boards. So there are a number of issues with the building, including the need for new plumbing and wiring, as well as asbestos removal. So it's literally just a uh, engineering and construction company doing renovations on the palace. And it is not for what Greg says. Greg says they are painting and redecorating the palace. I mean, he said this months ago and he said he quoted uh, just waiting for the paint to dry and for the smell to go before I move in. I mean, come on, guys. Yeah. There's no one living there. It's just been renovated for me. And you've just had like um, two, what, two, two months off, March, April, May. You just had two months off to paint all of the United Kingdom for me. You know, yeah. and, let, and let the smell, of, let the paint smell go away so I can just, you know, drive through my carriage and wave and everything's painted and, and the palace is all done up. <clears throat> so that's it. There is the Buckingham Palace, Friday 24th of July. About two years ago, I think it was in 2011, um, I, I'd, I'd read a book by um, somebody called Greg Hallett and um, I'd listened to radio interviews he'd done. This guy uh, wrote this book uh, called Hitler Was a British Agent. He also wrote another book called uh, Are You My Father? And he wrote another book called New Zealand, A Blackmailer's Guide. And I read his book and I was listening to the thing about the world being run on shame and I thought that was interesting. His other thing which I found even more interesting was he was talking about the construction, deconstruction and construction of the subconscious. Your subconscious is responsible for everything. It leads your conscious mind and uh, if you if you can somehow get into someone's subconscious you can sort of make basically make them never go anywhere and if you can kind of help the subconscious improve its ability you can basically achieve anything. So that's what I found incredibly interesting. And I wanted to talk to him about this. So I got in touch with the guy. And the only reason I got in touch with him is because when I got the Hitler's was a British agent book, it actually had his email on it. He said something like, enjoy the book. And I thought, this isn't from a book company. This has come straight from him. So I got back in touch with him. I spoke to him on Skype once. And he said, oh, I'm coming to England. And I said, oh, right, well, when are you coming? And he said, oh, I'm coming in about two weeks. And he said, we should meet up for a chat and stuff. I said, okay, no problem, because I said, oh, I like your books, I'm very interested. Because I did really, really want to speak to him. I wanted to speak to him a lot. And um, I don't think I want to speak to anyone more than this, because I really did. So without him getting a big head, he has got a big head, you know, I really did. So, and then when it got close to the time, I said, so what's happening? Are you going to meet up? And he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, where are you staying? And at the time, I had a spare room. I was staying in London. And I said, well, you might as well just go and, go and stay in the spare room for a bit, because, again, I wanted to speak to him. And what better, you let him stay for a bit, you're going to get to speak to him, aren't you? Well, you'd hope so. Um, so, all in all, I was very, very pleased. Um, and I, I picked his brain for a while. We spoke about lots of different interesting things. And he stayed for quite a while. And he stayed for really quite a long time. Which suited me down to the ground. Didn't put me out, really. So, that was that was lucky. thing is, like, 
some of the things Greg comes out with, right, um, are definitely true, and some of the things he's 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 been told are definitely based on like genuine knowledge and genuine intelligence. People definitely do tell him stuff. So anyone who says no, no, he's just making it all up. <laughs> he's just dreaming it all up. Like, that's not the case. But some of it, <laughs> I don't believe. <laughs> In the end, me and Greg fell out, right, because he did something which he shouldn't have done, and he kind of compromised made me and made me look like a dickhead because I introduced him to somebody. It was a guy who'd written a book, and um, or he'd written a transcript of a book. Then Greg had got hold of this transcript through someone else, and then he'd sort of written it up, edited it, but he couldn't find the guy. This is his story anyway, and I don't think he could find the guy because I know uh, I spoke to the guy's agent, and also he had a lawyer cousin, and the lawyer cousin said, no, I, I got emails from Greg Hallett. I thought he was a nutcase, so I thought I wouldn't put him through to him. And the guy whose book it was actually said, oh, well, I would have wanted him to speak to him. If he's telling Porky Pies, their establishment Porky Pies, this guy, his credentials add up. I've been in his house two or three times, so with the greatest respect to him, I don't know if he's telling the truth or not. I haven't even read the entire book. And Mountbatten didn't want to write a boring book about... Um, the war he wanted it to be kind of like interesting he didn't want it like a military report this guy was called john ainsworth davis he used to write under a pen name called christopher crichton he used to be a good friend of ian fleming and he also knows roger moore very well um, and basically the point is this guy looks like very likely that he was the inspiration for james bond so he was working in the film industry afterwards I fell out with Greg because Greg, um, when he had sort of located this guy, we said he couldn't locate. He said to me, well, you, you know, I said, well, I happen to have uh, met this guy. And he said, oh, could you introduce us? And I said, yeah, so long as you don't go around there fucking being a big Billy Bump, big bananas twat like what you often are and sort of bullying him because I know what you're like. You're like manipulating people and you don't care. You're a bit, you're a narcissist. You bully people. Um, he doesn't bully me, but he bullies virtually everybody else. It's quite funny. It is actually very funny, but it's also extremely obnoxious. And I thought I'm not having him going around to some elderly person's house and like just basically <laughs> doing their heads in, you know, <laughs> I don't want them dying <laughs> or, you know, being really upset because of his obnoxious behavior. So he goes, yeah, no problem, no problem, no problem. And he goes around there, and he was being a bit of a twat, but, like, he was being less of a twat than what he usually is when he's got an audience. <laughs> he was doing, like, the, the, the thing he was doing, I don't know I don't know why he was doing this. He got given, like, um, a, 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 a glass of brandy or something, and he was holding it up like this, like this, up like that. Now, he was doing that for attention-seeking reasons. It was very strange. I don't know what the fuck he thought he... And he was getting like sideward looks at him. But the thing is, this guy, despite the fact he'd been very angry when he found out that Greg had written the whole book and was going to publish it, calling himself the author, right? He was very angry. He wanted to call the police. When, before I got Greg around this time, you know, he calmed down and he thought, fucking hell, like he's, he's actually put an index in. He's done a very good job of it. But what Greg had done is, <laughs> but you just got to say, what the fuck's he doing? He, he'd written on it. Author, Lord Chancellor. <laughs> and you're like, fucking hell, wait. I don't know why, well, I do know why he'd done this, but I don't know why he did it at the same time. So I discovered this video of Tom Carhill quite early on, and one of the things he said in his video was about Greg Hallett meeting Francisco Manuel, and also him writing the book, The Hidden King of England, uh, pushing Francisco Manuel as the king, and um, Greg Hallett was claiming himself uh, Lord, Lord Chancellor. We knew about this because um, Greg had done some videos with a guy called Jim Fetzer um, quite early on. Prince Philip stole my car. I'm sure. Stole Prince Philip car. stole your car. Prince Philip stole my car. Mercedes Vito van. He stole it. <laughs> he absolutely stole it. I'm sure. Well, why in God's name did he do that, Greg? He could afford a zillion of them on his well, own. Yeah. And in those videos, he is actually talking mainly about the illegitimacy of the royal family and that um, there was another bloodline. Francisco Manuel, um, this is the guy that wrote the book with Greg Hallett and was the guy that Greg was saying was the rightful king. So it seemed quite strange that um, obviously finding some of these videos, many of which had by this point been deleted off the internet, um, to find Greg Hallett not mentioning him anymore. Um, in fact, wiping a lot of that information 
and now claiming that he was a king from a completely different bloodline involving Anne Boleyn and some other character, historical characters. Uh, that in itself did not make sense. His claims in his documents of his ancestry, which we later looked into, I later looked into with the sisters. However, that aside, we were wondering, who is Francisco Manuel and what happened to this guy? Greg claims that Queen Victoria had a son who was a legitimate heir to the throne in 1834, who was exiled to Portugal. His name was Marcus Manuel. Greg was backing Marcus's great-great-great-great-grandson, Francisco Manuel, as the rightful heir to the throne, long before claiming this right as his own. Together, Greg and Francisco, they wrote the Hidden King series. Now, funnily enough, this can't be found anywhere. It's unavailable on Amazon or anywhere else that I've tried to find it online. And I think this is because he backs Francisco as a rightful king in the books. After writing the series, Greg decided to cut ties with Francisco and claim himself as the rightful heir. So my questions are, what happened to Francisco? Why can no information be found on him? I've searched all over the internet. I found very little. Why can you not buy this series of books anywhere online? None of his supporters appear to have read it. There's no excerpts that seem to exist anywhere on the internet. Before she was crowned queen, Princess Victoria married the second in line to the throne on the 9th of March 1834 in Brittany. Exactly seven weeks later, she gave birth to Prince Marcos Manuel. This was Victoria's firstborn and only legitimate child. Here is the letter from Queen Victoria to her firstborn Prince Marcos Manuel, dated St. Patrick's Day, 17th of March 1850, 39 days before he turned 16. Here is Queen Victoria's thumbprint in blood. It read, Assemble him claimant. This is recorded in the Hidden King of England, Armour Christie, unveiling the rose. Exactly 19 and a half years later, Queen Victoria made Prince Marcos Manuel King John II of England, 6th of October 1869. Queen Victoria was then relegated to Victoria Regina, Empress of India. He's been staying in Portugal quite a bit, and there's this guy, it's very, very funny, that <laughs> this guy who plays in like a kind of like a, a, mus a musical instrument, right? This guy called um, Francesco Manuel, right? <laughs> he reckons right, that his um, great 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 granddad was um, the only legitimate son of Queen Victoria, and this blind 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 King George, who of some country or another, got her pregnant. They actually had got married, but then they had this kid, and then she decided to get married again, and then she got married to like gay gay Albert, and then all the other kids were like not even Alberts anyway. But because the other marriage hadn't been annulled, they didn't get divorced. It wasn't legitimate, and they're all not legitimate. And then this guy had been hidden in Portugal. The problem with this is, Craig said this is all proved by photos, um, and he's got these photos. And it's quite interesting because in royal photos, you will notice the queen is always bang, like pose photos, right in the middle. And it is true that when you've got these big wigs, you can tell certain things. There is obviously an element of sort of symbolism. They don't put the queen just looking in on the side and a load of people like eating a trifle or something. She's always bang in the middle of like a pose photo. That's the way it works. Now, there are pictures of this little boy sitting there like that on a chair. And there's people on either side, like three people there, three people there. It does look like he's obviously important. But the point is... So he's got these pictures of this guy now to prove that he's only got any link to this man is, you know, there is no proof. And then he goes, they're all royal princesses. And you're like, okay, like, well, if they're all royal princesses, can you prove that each of those faces, put other pictures in, because this is a little book he was writing on behalf of this Mark Francesco Manuel. He doesn't say, look, you've got these princesses and here's the, you know, other pictures of them. And this is how, you know, you, so you could say, oh, that looks like a, yeah, I can see. And apparently all these royal princesses went on to be like queen, you know, like, you know, they got married to like the top royals in each country, like Sweden, Switzerland, whatever. And, you know, all around Europe. So they were like the top princesses, the ones who'd marry the, the sort of basically the kings or the next best thing in each of the countries. But he never bothers doing this. And, it, and if you say, look, where's the pictures of these princesses he goes ah fucking what's the point if they can't be bothered to do the research what's the point and it's like look people don't read a book to then go and start looking on the internet they, read, they want at least got the first step to be done for them he, he wasn't interested he wasn't interested in doing that then he starts going on about these things called royal max royal max now if you put royal max into the internet nothing <laughs> nothing comes up and he's saying these are royal max that royals understand 
and that they mean that this person is the king and they all they all reckon he's the king right now this Francesco Manuel <laughs> is an antiques dealer yeah and also apparently he's got a brother in Portuguese intelligence and he lives in Portugal sorry and he lives in this place called the Citadella or something I forget what it's called anyway it's quite looks quite a nice idyllic place he lives but when even though he wants Greg to kind of let his story out because he reckons he's the true line to the throne of England right <laughs> when Greg goes to stay with him, even though he's got quite a bit of land and stuff like that, he doesn't let Greg stay in his house. He makes him go and stay in the hotel at 40 euros a pop. And like, this hotel's not particularly good, so you, and there's no real shops around there for food, you've got nowhere to cook, so he has to go to restaurants every night. So basically, this guy, he wants to like, claim the entire British Empire as his own, but he won't put Greg up in his house. But Greg, I don't know how, he, he's fucking gone mad, and he thinks that this guy, is like, you know, the bee's knees. And because he's being sucked in by it, he doesn't want to admit he's being fooled. I tipped over from winter into summer season. I was living 100 metres from the coast in the Algarve. So I went down to Beneca, had a coffee and a beer. I thought, where am I going to live, you know? So, and I just had this memory that I wanted to live in a cave in Europe. And it was like, it was warm enough. Yeah. So I just wandered for 45 minutes, found a cave, slept on that. Uh, I was there for about 123 days. But because of giant waves, coming up, hitting the 40-foot cliff face and going up another 50 feet. I, I didn't sleep there the entire time, so I slept there 100 days. So it's, it's, it's extremely funny because he is, Greg, I mean, he's extremely amusing. He's it's one of the most entertaining people you'll ever meet. There's no question of it. But <laughs> the point is, he's, he is a dickhead, right? And the, this guy has just played him like a complete fool, and it's so funny, right? And basically, so... He's, he's promoting this guy, and as a result, this guy right, has sort of knighted him a while ago. <laughs> he's knighted him, even though he's not been crowned a king, and Greg knows all about this stuff. He knows you're not the king unless you've been crowned, and you've got to be crowned at Westminster Abbey if you're an English king. He knows that there's always been disputes about each of the monarchs over the years, but you're not the king unless you've been crowned, have you? You know, you, you can't just say, well, I am, so this. You, you've got to put, put a challenge in. Now, the funny thing about this is, that gets much more amusing is <laughs> then it changes and he's actually got a YouTube video of him being crowned a prince and Lord Chancellor <laughs> right and this is where it gets even more funny when he says I am Lord Chancellor it's like that guy Brian Gerrish who works for the UK column he talks about UK rather than the UK right if I was saying I am the mayor I don't go I am mayor <laughs> wrong that's not how you say it so he goes i am lord chancellor and it's like it's so funny because it doesn't grammatically make any sense now so basically he's been knighted a royal prince and lord chancellor <laughs> and it's like no such thing it's fucking hilarious right but the thing is because he's so big-headed and he sort of like goes around bullying anybody he, you know like anyone who's not like extremely strong-willed and even people who are who just you know they just think he's a dickhead and just ignore him he's constantly bullying people and this guy sucked him in and he's just made a complete arse of him <laughs> he gets very well he gets very kind of he, he, he acts funny around you if, you if you don't believe something he says or you want explanation you want to explain it so in the next part of allegedly king the documentary we will talk about uh, my interviews with the sisters of greg hallett also the um the inception of my youtube channel which kind of really rattled greg hallett and co we'll talk about david mahoney and charlie ward and jack kidd and their involvement in promoting this story and then later making a documentary uh, on greg hallett this documentary of course fails to explain anything about Greg Hallett pushing someone else as king before, of course. So that, amongst many other things, we'll discuss next time on the next Allegedly King. Well, it's true. Yeah. You know, it's true. What's actually going to happen is the crown and the orb and the scepter and the sword are going to be left on the throne. The gate's going to be open. I'm going to walk in and I'm going to sit down on the chair. Someone's going to put the crown on my head, take a photo and we're going to send that around the world and then we'll have a ceremony later. Wow. That's actually what's going to happen. It's it. Uh, we're doing it and be part of it and come along for the ride. It's happening. It's absolutely happening. It's a ranga, the awakening.